Hey, you guys, welcome back to another episode of In Totality. I'm your host, Megan Ashley. And today I have a very special guest who gathered me all the way together. <laughs> she got me all the way together with her new book, The Mean Girl Manual. So welcome, Trinity Mitchell. Thank you, sis. Thanks for coming. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here. I thought I, I was done <laughs> being outside until I got a call from you. So here we go. Stop. Stop <laughs> it. You We're outside I'm, once more. I'm listen, I'm so happy that you're here. And we caught you because this is your last trip before this is my last trip. She said, This is it. My doctor said I cannot go nowhere yes. else. This is it. Yes. So I'm so thankful that God allowed yeah. us to do this before right. you were about to be, you know, yes. nesting. In. Yes, yes. Are you excited? I'm super excited. It's been a really great pregnancy. It's been so good that it's gone by fast. Yeah. Like, so fast. I feel like when I saw you on Instagram, you weren't pregnant the very first, and then all of a sudden you were, boom. you know, in the gym. I can't <laughs> believe you. When I say you encourage me so much to work out, That's you funny. and Nona, I'm looking at mm -hmm. y'all work out every day and I'm like, I have no excuse. <laughs> I just you don't. You gotta get up in this mood. I know. Yeah, I, need, I need an accountability person that's usually brandy brandy will be like go mm -hmm. to the gym but i need i need like a trainer yeah i can't be left Sometimes to myself because i have a trainer too oh, okay yeah I'm, I'm a certified trainer but i also have a trainer wow because i just like to put that she increases the intensity of my workout she's mm. my best friend she increases the intensity of my workouts and it just makes it to be honest we all have those moves where we're like we don't want to do this mm -hmm. like i don't feel like this mm -hmm. so i have to show up anyway on those days yeah so that really helps me trinity yeah. i will sit in a parking lot for an hour and a half girl i can't <laughs> i'm not joking you. that's so funny i will find every maybe email to respond genetics, maybe but yeah i don't i don't have them <laughs> listen <laughs> i i'm what you call um well I, so i used i'm gonna show you my before pictures okay. i used to be really thick in big mama okay okay thick. i was i was hippie curvy all those things uh -huh. right and um when my marriage was just falling apart and towards the end mm -hmm. i just went into a really bad depression yeah. and i dropped so much weight yeah so i went from like close to hitting like 180 uh -huh. to 130 wow. to 125 in the matter of like three or four months wow it was like really drastic yeah um and so i have taken advantage mm. <laughs> of that weight loss yeah but i'm like the skinny fat <laughs> like i'm small <laughs> But I'm so unhealthy. So I need to get in the gym. <laughs> yeah. I need to get in the gym. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna just keep watching your videos and just see if watch you just do something. Literally just quicken my spirit or mm -hmm. something. I need them to quicken me <laughs> yeah. when I when I watch your videos. I need to quicken. But I'm so <laughs> excited that you're here mm -hmm. because you wrote a book that I truly believe it will change everybody's life who has female friendships. I receive it. Like it is a game changer. Thank you. And I'm not just saying that. Yeah, thank you. Because I wouldn't say it. If I didn't, I would be like, oh, it was cute. Yeah, you like me. No. I would, right, I would be like, your book is so cute. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. It's right. <laughs> but no. Yeah. Like, and and I'm sorry, you guys, it's not out. She gave she blessed me with the audio. <laughs> yes. Um, it's not out yet. And when it comes out, I'm gonna promote it mm -hmm. because I appreciate you. The the audio was like, I told you it was like listening. It was like talking about my big sis. Yeah, yeah. Or my cousin. Mm -hmm. or It was so like relatable and I it, like it was so good. Yeah. So tell me, um, just first of all, tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. Who is Trinity Mitchell? And then we can get into all the things about the book. I am Trinity Mitchell, everybody. And I like to go by your friend, Trin, because when the Lord gave me this assignment, he said, people need a friend. And so since he had dealt with me so much in that area, I don't know. I was on, I was at work. I work for an online prayer ministry. It's known as Warrior Nation. And I was showing some products that we had in our store, Warrior Apparel. And when it, it wrapped up, the whole Lord had already been dealing with me as it pertains to like transitioning, like 
who I show up as mm. in people's lives and who he's called me to be. And so, I don't know, I wrapped up that segment with, all right, y'all, I'm your friend Trent or something. And mm-hmm. I looked, I'm like, looked at Brian, I'm like, what did that <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and I feel like God was just giving me an inkling about go. Like, you've been writing about it, you've been teaching it, you've been like, you know, um, you've been spending this time with me. I want I want you to trust me that I'm calling mm. you to something else. And so, um, I just trusted it and I started walking in it. Um, it's been a beautiful journey. Um, I think the, I think the best part about embracing this part of my life is also having Brandon as my husband, uh, because I see so many women as they like step into like who God has really called them mm-hmm. to be. And, you know, like I think too, you've been married, you, you know, like who I am. We got married in 2014. It's 2024. I'm not the same Trinity. Mm-hmm. Brandon's not the same Brandon, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think too, like as we like move and navigate into different chapters of our lives, it's hard for us to e- embrace each other's evolution. Mm-hmm. But Brandon has been like the husband that's like, you got to do what God told you to do. You got to like, you got to go. <sighs> that's a blessing. And so I've been really appreciative of that because I don't think that, you know. <laughs> that's not the norm. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that I'd be your friend, Trin. And doing everything that I'm doing if I didn't have him. Wow. Um, even with my talk show friend Fusion, I told him what God said. And then I didn't think he was going to do what God said. Like, he did too much. <laughs> like, can we be disobedient for at least 24 hours? So, <laughs> I remember getting home that evening and Brandon had a meeting. And he had people in my, I don't, okay, so like, here's the thing. People don't get this, don't know this about me. It's like, I'm such a loner. I am too. Uh, yeah. And I know my personality makes you think that I'm I'm always with the people I want. Like I want to be outside. I don't. <laughs> Are you an introvert? Um, I'm really not. Okay. I'm 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 not an introvert. I just like being alone. Um, yeah. Which so, is interesting because you grew up with siblings, right? You're the that's only girl. Why I like to right. be alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> so. <laughs> and you were the only girl. Yes, I have seven brothers. How is that? I like to be alone. <laughs> so <laughs> I got home this particular <laughs> evening and my friend Phil was there. Phil produces uh, Friend Fusion with Brandon. And I had a call with another friend. And they, Brandon had a team, a committee. Like, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I just told you this today. Why do I have a website? Why do I have a pro? <laughs> like, chill. I love it. <laughs> but um, so that's been really beautiful. And just embracing this part of Trinity. I don't know if I could have, have really have done it without my husband. Yeah. So really, really grateful for him. Um, But yeah, I'm, Meg, to just be honest with you, I just really enjoy teaching people to friend the way that God calls us. Mm. To. I think it's a term that people use so loosely. And I think social media did that to us. Absolutely. Because we just friends with everybody Absolutely. now. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then also too, not just having a real understanding of what a friend is, mm. but I think in the Holy Spirit teaching me how to friend, right? I think one thing he brought to my attention is that a friend will stick closer than a brother. Ooh. And that's not often how we think about friends. And so that changed my whole perspective on friendship. Mm. You know, I love to say that I think, the best family members are the people that we're not related to oftentimes. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's, that's really changed how I show up as a friend. And it's, it's definitely helped me uh, with my perspective on who I consider as a friend. Yeah, for uh, sure. So, yeah, that's who I am. I'm just a girl that just, I just love God. I love my man, Brian. <laughs> And I love being a friend. Aww. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and you could tell. Yeah. Like, if you just, and make sure you guys follow her on Instagram, your friend Tran. Yep. Underscore, on, on Instagram. Yep. <laughs> your friend Tran underscore. Underscore. Yeah. Because you definitely get that mm-hmm. from your content mm-hmm. and you, like, you can tell the things that are important to you mm-hmm. just by what you post yes. and, and the way that you articulate yourself. Mm-hmm. You could tell the things that are important to you. So, I, I don't want to spoil the book, okay. but- I have, I want to get into all the things because when I say this book. I don't think that we can spoil it. Okay. Yeah. Because I, can you <laughs> share, so the first thing that obviously like rendered my attention mm-hmm. and so much empathy was the story about you and your best friend. Yeah. So can you share with us in the audience just a little bit about that? Because um, was it that relationship that revealed that there were some mean girl qualities Absolutely. in you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So it was, where do I want to start? So my best friend's name is Kalisha. Kalisha's passed away now. Um, her 33rd birthday would have been February 15th. Wow. Yeah. This year? This year. Wow. When did she pass away? 2024. Okay. So she was 20, I mean, 2014, I'm sorry. 2014. And she was 23. 
Wow. Um, so let me just give you, so you talk about my fitness. So let me tell you how I got into that. <laughs> Kalisha passed away. We got married in June. Brandon and I, she passed away in September. And from September to December, I gained about 40, 45 pounds. I didn't even know who I was. Yeah. Wow. I was I was thick, 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 friend. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> and I don't use that loosely. <laughs> I was thick, thick, thick. And so I went to my, my annual appointment and my doctor was like, Yeah, this is this is not good, especially in this time range. Like you gotta do something. And so that's wow. kinda how I got into fitness. Wow. Cause I realized I was kind of I was allowing myself to pass away with Kalisha. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. I remember, I remember feeling this this guilt when the year changed to 2015. Like I was leaving her. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to really me chills. describe the depression. But I remember when the year changed to 2015. It was like this sense of guilt, like I was leaving her because she yeah. died in 2014. I really don't know how to explain it. And it was so hard for me to um to just get past that. It was mm-hmm. so hard for me to. I don't even, I don't know if I have a language for it yet. Mm. Um, that was the, the darkest time of my life, period. And to be honest with you, it was, the, it ended up being the darkest time of my life because I was disobedient. Mm. Yeah. I decided that, you know, in this, this fight that Kalisha and I had, that I was going to play her to the left, ghost her, play around with her, uh, because she had did some things that disappointed me. And I decided, you know what? Since you want to play with me, I'm a, I want to teach her a lesson. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> I, I really want to teach her a lesson. And to just give you guys a little backstory and history, she had chronic asthma. And so we had been friends practically our whole lives, like probably since we were like five. And so um, she had um, chronic asthma and she would often have asthma attacks. She would go on life support. She would have to learn how to walk again. Mm. Um, it was just bad. Like it was just bad. Her doctors had even suggested that she should move away from Mississippi and go somewhere where her lungs would function at a mm-hmm. better um, capacity, so to speak. And so, but she never did. She 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 stayed, and um, she just had a, a lot of ongoing health issues um, with just breathing. Mm. It changed her voice. Like she went from talking like this to like this. Yeah. Um, and I remember her last the time before her last time. Um, I, I guess I would call it the episode when she went on life support. She was on life support about two weeks at that time, babe, Brandon. And we had, I had just moved to Jackson, Mississippi. We were fresh out of college. Mm-hmm. And so, um, she was coming to go to grad school and I was coming to go to grad school. We, we had our, like, we were going to do this thing. Right. And so I think our registration was the same day and I went to Mississippi college to, in hopes of registering to get my master's in vocal pedagogy. Um, and then she wanted to go to Millsap. What is that? Vocal, vocal ped. It teaches <laughs> I'm like, you. like, that can't move past that. Vocal I'm, I'm over here not like, mm-hmm. It's Eight. basically the practice of the voice. Teaching. Okay. So my, my undergrad degree is in music. Okay. Yeah. And so I love the voice. Like, okay. I love the voice so much. Uh, I'm a musician too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so I just thought that this, this would be a great time. I could stay in the same city as Brandon mm-hmm. and I can pursue this, right? Mm-hmm. I just love taking care of people's voices. It's always been my thing. I hate mm-hmm. when the singer is not well, right? <laughs> like, I'm not the best singer. I can get the job done, but I can. I have this thing where I can tell you what to do. I don't even get it. <laughs> so I thought vocal pay would be like yeah. good for me. But anyway, long story made short. We didn't make it to the registration that day. Neither one of us. We didn't go because Kalisha had an asthma attack. And when she had the asthma attack that led her into a long recovery, I think it was about three to four months. Wow. Um, and so I went to work. Brandon went to work after, like during her recovery. But her mom was, was like in a space where she was having to like take off work to take care of mm. Kalisha, so to speak. But at the same time, you know. This life is life, right? Mm-hmm. So if you don't work, you don't have insurance for your child. Right. You know? And so we were like, you go to work. We're going to help her mm-hmm. recover. We're going to take her to her appointments, all the things. And so during that time, she she told me that year, I think it was like March or April. She's like, listen, when I get this sick again, I'm going to die. And I just want you to know, you know? And it was really hard for me to hear. I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't speak that. Right. Um, You're like rebuke. Yes. Yeah, so like, <laughs> girl, don't say that. Right. Don't say that. She's like, I'm telling you, my body is so weak. This is my seventh time on life support this way. Jesus. And I can't, she's only at that time 20, 23. So she's like, you know, my body just can't take this anymore. I just feel it. I just know. And so, um, 
we left that conversation alone. It's like whatever. So we get married. Kalisha's um definitely possessive. Like super possessive, and it's like my best friends get married, <laughs> and I'm over this period. <laughs> and so I was just kind of disappointed with some of the things she mm-hmm. did. They were childish, they were petty, mm-hmm. but I wanted to teach her a lesson. Mm-hmm. And if I could leave anything with the people watching today, when I tell you, you cannot teach a lesson. Don't worry about it, because mm-hmm. it's, it's gonna you're gonna end up like learning the lesson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're gonna, gonna be the teach. lesson. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's usually how the Lord does uh-huh, it. It's absolutely. like, oh, you want to teach somebody a lesson? Yeah. Let me teach you mm-hmm. something. And she actually did. She came to me. When I went to her, because I'm not the kind of person, I'm not like, if, if what you say about me, man, period. Because I'm not doing that, <laughs> carrying on. <laughs> I'm not passive aggressive. I'm aggressive, period. <laughs> and so <laughs> I went to her and I asked her about it. And she was just the person she always was, honest. She's like, oh, yeah, I did that. And she apologized. And she, mm. you know, and everything. But it was just, it just hurt me to, that it was just the fact that she had like done it or she mm-hmm. had said it. And it, it's so crazy because it's so trivial that I can't even remember everything. What? Like real petty stuff, you know? And you got to remember like, and I'm not making an excuse for friends or whatever, but at this point we're 20 mm-hmm. free. I'm getting married. I'm the first of my friends getting married, mm-hmm. you know? So this is all new for everybody. And it's like, yeah. And I'm to myself in this petty ass, um, I don't even know. Just, I, I can't, I really can't remember. Just, just petty stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, um, when she told me she was honest about it, it upset me. Cause I just can't believe you did that. Yeah. You know, at that time I thought, I, I thought I was that girl. I, I would never do that to you. <laughs> right. I would never say something so catty. Right. But, you know, <laughs> and will, and would. <laughs> and so <laughs> it, it upset me. And so I decided that I was, I was just not going to, um, communicate with her. Right. So I didn't necessarily like ghost her, but I ghosted her. Mm. And so when she would text me to say, can we talk? Can we sit down and talk? Can we, you know, work mm-hmm. through this? I'm going I'm to text her back. I'm going to wait. I'm like, I was so intentional. I was intentionally petty. Like, I'm going to wait like six hours. Not six hours. <laughs> or I'm going to text her back next week or to the point I might forget. Right. And so like, finally, I think about two or three weeks went by. And I felt like I was, I feel like the Holy Spirit was convicting me for doing it. And that I should meet with her. Mm. So I said, okay. We can go talk. Like, mm-hmm. we can go talk. So, I told But she's right still now. reaching out, mm-hmm. even though you were being like... Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. She was still reaching out. And so, um, I decided I would meet with her. Excuse me, eventually. And so, we, we scheduled that we were going to meet. And I think the day before, we were actually scheduled to meet. Her mom texted me and said that she was in ICU. And... Yeah, everything had just just that it was it was that <sighs> within a week, maybe maybe not even a full week, she had passed away. <sighs> and that was when I started to see like life is short. Mm. And I let something like this like really get the best of me, get the best of my friends. This is like my lifelong friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Yeah. Brandon and I was just talking this morning about how sometimes we have seasons up, then seasons being up with people, and then it's like the people that have experienced life with you for real. Like, do our seasons end, or do we just learn to just be different in this season? season. And yeah, I don't, I don't think that neither of us knew how to be different in that season. Yeah, I think I had a, a lot of um, failures in, as a friend just navigating into marriage, mm-hmm. um, where she may have felt excluded. And then I think there were some things that she just didn't know how to accept and embracing my new season mm-hmm. as like a wife mm-hmm. and also her best friend. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Her brand, brand is best friend mm-hmm. and her best friend, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and so things that we could have, you know, worked through, talked through, you know, but I decided to just be mad. Yeah. And it literally led me into the darkest depression of my life. So much that like, I remember when Brandon and I got married, um and well this is she died in september so we got married in june i remember sometime after that i just wanted the lights off mm. i don't can't even explain that now i did not want to see light though wow <laughs> i would wow just, just, i understand because yeah. i've been through a depression mm-hmm. so i understand that that and it's hard to explain mm-hmm. but you just want to be in an environment that's conducive to what you're feeling on the yeah, inside and light so isn't true. conducive to that yeah, and it was not at all yeah and so all i wanted to do was eat and keep the lights off i'm good i'm sure i just stay in my room i don't want to talk to people i don't want to be bothered like yeah 
And so, um, yeah. And Man. I think that relationship helped me to discover um, that I wasn't the friend I thought I was. Mm. I, was al- I was also very prideful. <laughs> Very, uh, I wasn't, I was never the one that could have been doing something wrong. Mm. Somebody was always doing something to me, right? Mm. And even when somebody was doing something to me, I still didn't consider how I contributed to the issue, yeah. So, yeah, that was a wake up call for me, yeah. big time, big time wake up call for me. Wow, I really don't feel like I fully recovered from that loss and that experience until about probably 2018, 2019. Wow, and that's when the Lord and I, we we started doing friendship together, like for real. Mm. <laughs> and I think in my time with him and um, just prayer, fasting, yeah. like intentional time with him uh, is when he used that relationship to do, to, to, to create what everybody know now is your friend. Trend. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I heard you saying earlier that you're so jacked up, like I'm trash. Yeah. But I think he, that's he, me all day. Yeah. He's, <laughs> He's took me on this journey to treasure my trash. And mm. So yeah, it's been beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So how long do you feel like it took you? Cause you said that you guys were supposed to meet a week, a day before. Yeah. Literally the day the, before. The day before mm-hmm. you guys were supposed to meet is mm-hmm. where well, she, she was supposed to meet the next day. And then her mom takes me. So if we were supposed to meet on Monday, her mom takes me on Sunday. <sighs> so that's how long I kept playing around, I guess. Yeah. And so that week of her being in ICU before she passed, Mm -hmm. was she able to communicate? Like, were you guys able to do say, I'm sorry, nothing, nothing. Nothing. And so So how did you only imagine, uh, you know what I mean? With no last words, with no, like, it's okay. I forgive you or whatever. It's just like, cause I I remember, I remember going to her apartment and asking her about the things that were said to me. And she told me, it was like, I'm sorry. You know, she was very apologetic and everything. She took accountability, but I was just so mad. I'm like, bro, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm out. And, and it's so funny now because I would never handle someone like that now. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's that's how that was. That was kind of how it ended. Wow. Yeah, and this is a person who's my maid of honor. Um, I don't. Um, I have a stepson, Tyler. Mm-hmm. And Tyler was about six when me and Brandon started dating. And so she was Tyler's auntie for me. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the person that would, um, for if anything we needed, like navigated from him being picked up and brought to Jackson on the weekends mm-hmm. or something like that. She became that auntie. Um, People, you know. and you don't think about that. Like, obviously, I didn't really have to. I had a situation in 2021 20, mm-hmm. where um, I had to fire Mm-hmm. my kid's nanny who was like a sister to me like we have two matching tattoos wow. she was and she did something foul mm-hmm. and um and i don't think people realize that like when you have friendship breakups and stuff mm-hmm. like that how it impacts your children mm-hmm. and as a mother um not only are you losing a friend mm-hmm. But those yes. kids lost something too. Absolutely. And and when you don't have kids, like the other person, if they don't have kids, they're not aware of like the impact mm-hmm. that it has on your children too. Yeah. You know, because it's like not only did I lose somebody, but they lost somebody Absolutely. that they love too. They're asking about their auntie or something. Like, yeah, that's the and it's like you know, yeah. and it's like this is they don't look at the relationships. In the sense of something petty mm-hmm. could end this, you know, they don't, right, they, right. they like, that's family. That's my aunt, right? right they right. don't, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't think that we, you know, take that in consideration sometimes yeah, yeah, absolutely. in the ending of mm-hmm. a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think last year really taught me um, just that lesson mm-hmm. of the wrong ways to end a relationship and the right ways. Yes. So there is a right and Because there way. is a right and Absolutely. a wrong way yeah. to end mm-hmm. or maybe change yeah. the dynamic in that in that friendship. Yeah. Um so what would your the book talks about and, and again like this book is going to change mm-hmm. so many people's lives if they listen to it and grab a hold of it mm-hmm. and like I told you before we got started, I was like, I had to pray before listening to it mm-hmm. because I didn't want to be triggered. Yeah. 
And if I was going to be triggered, I wanted God's help. Yeah. <laughs> like God help me, mm -hmm. right? And I wanted to seek me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go into it picking and pointing the finger at yeah. everybody else yeah. and like, oh yeah, that's her. Mm -hmm. Little Miss, Little Miss <laughs> right. Petty, yeah. Little Miss. Um, what was the, what was the <laughs> other one? Um, oh, they got the right one. Oh yeah, Little Miss, you got the right you, one. Uh, Little Miss, <laughs> you got the right one. Um, so I didn't want to go into it like, yep, that's that person, that person, yeah. that person. I wanted to be like, Lord, you know, reveal. Reveal me, mm -hmm. you know, show me my heart and yeah. show me areas where I need to be better as a friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because um, when I went through the situation that I went through last year, I realized that our relationships with people and how we interact with them, mm -hmm. we try to make it separate from our relationship with the Lord. Right. And it's not. Yeah. It's a reflection of our, relationship of our reverence and yeah. our relationship yeah, with him. absolutely. And when you offend your brother mm -hmm. or sister, it's not just an offense to them. Yeah. But you, like when we're mean, when uh -huh. we're mean girls, we're not just mean to them, mm -hmm. but that's an offense with the Lord absolutely. because that is the one that he loves. Yes. That is the one yeah. that he got on that cross for. Right. So who, like how dare I mishandle the one that he loves. Yes, and I, there was so much conviction in it. Yes. And I think too, like, I think when we have issues with people, we're so often focused on what God thinks about us and not so much what God thinks about them. Yeah. And like, when I tell you, I've learned my lesson, like God is, God is going to stand 10 toes down where <laughs> he is. Okay. So just as much as he loves you, he loves her. So when you're talking about her, when you're so on those seeds of discord, trying to gather the people to the other people around y'all to not like her. Um, Can you talk about that? Because what <laughs> is that? You know, you know, there's like, okay, so let me ask you this. Let me, I'll just give you a scenario. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like you are going to be the friendship guru. We're going that. to make sure, <laughs> and I'm going to try to do everything I can to advocate for this. Um, if there is an offense, mm -hmm. so me, okay, so me and Brenda, yeah, right, me and Brenda friends. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Brenda. <laughs> it's like, what did I do? <laughs> you think, I'm just minding my business. <laughs> Sorry, <Brenda. laughs> um, so me and Brenda are friends, uh -huh. right? And Brenda and I have a falling out, mm -hmm. and Brenda goes and tells you, yeah, you can't be friends with her if you're friends with me. Yeah. So first of all, girl, I'm grown. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> never way. We're not doing that. Um, so that's okay. Because a lot of times, if you have, feel if you've experienced something negative, some people think that oh, I like one. It's triggering. So maybe Brenda feels like it's triggering for her uh -huh. because you guys are such close friends. So she doesn't I, want you to be friends with me because it's triggering. Yeah. Or maybe because she Brenda had a very negative experience from me mm -hmm. with me, and she doesn't want her friend. Yeah. Trans to experience yeah. the same thing with me. I think each experience in these things is different, right? It's 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 definitely different mm -hmm. because things would change drastically if. Okay, so let me just give you this one: if you and Brenda are friends, Brenda's dating this guy, and she find out you've been DM DMing this guy, mm -hmm. and she tell me about it. Yeah, I can be cool on you. <laughs> yeah, real quick, <laughs> I can be cool on you mm -hmm. because. Not because, like, I'm going to create a problem because she has a problem with you. I'm mm -hmm. not doing that. Like, you're not my enemy mm -hmm. because whatever. It's just in the sense that if you're willing to. Character. Yeah, mm -hmm. character. If you're willing to do that to your, that's your friend. Mm -hmm. Like, you consider her your friend. Mm -hmm. It ain't too much. Like, I ain't going to be, you know, before right. something happens with me. Right. Right. And so I think, you know, each experience is different. Mm -hmm. And then there are, like, things like, um, well, Brendan, I want to hear what you got to say. So she mad. But well, Brenda's upset that your life is taking off in a way that she's been hoping that hers will take off. Mm. So she's projecting. Like, she's upset, right? Um, she's insecure. And so her issues with you are really the issues she, have, she has with herself, within mm -hmm. herself. And she's making her internal problem something external. Because mm -hmm. every time she sees Meg, Meg is reminding her of something that she does not feel secure about. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. And so when she comes to me, it's not my responsibility to say, Oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's be good on Meg. It's my responsibility as that friend, and I'm talking to the friends, the 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 mutual friend mm -hmm. <laughs> who is often not a good friend. You know, I'm I'm just gonna stay mutual. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a responsibility to say Meg. Meg is not your issue. I know you. I know that you think so. I get it, but I don't think Meg is your issue. 
And we're not, I'm not going to make Meg my issue because she's your issue. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And if that means a person don't want to be your friend, oh, well. But I think we have a responsibility to be accountable for how we show up in people's lives, too. I think this society, everybody wants everybody to agree with them, bro. Like, <laughs> everybody wants, please agree with me. Validate me. You know, nobody's saying, yo. So much so that people will end relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, and I and I, t- I I touched on this a little bit, and you and you can elaborate yeah. on what you feel because I was like, you know, because you're when you said the Mean Girl Manual, you were like, I can't believe this. Like I thought this was elementary, middle school, uh-huh. high school. Like yeah. I didn't believe that Mean Girls really existed uh-huh. in our adulthood, yeah. and they absolutely do. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> real bad, absolutely, <laughs> real bad. Shout do. out to you, Miami. <laughs> like. And it's crazy. I don't think I really experienced it as much as I did. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is really a thing. But um, I feel like when we're in high school and in middle school, like we don't have these heavy things, mm-hmm. right? So it's like if you're not bringing joy to my life, if this isn't yeah, easy, yeah. then yeah, then you like in the relationship when you're in right, high school and middle right. school. But as grown people, I don't know if people are – willing to like weather Mm -hmm. seasons yes you know like for me and i and i take full accountability i've said this before like Mm -hmm. i wish i did not i wish i didn't bleed on my friends as much as i did when i was going through the darkest times of my life Mm -hmm. i wish i didn't i wish there were i wish i kept some things to myself Mm -hmm. i wish i would have leaned into intimacy with the lord more than intimacy with my friends oh that's good especially when i was hurting that's so beautiful you confirming something that i was (laughs) so (laughs) funny i told brady this morning i said it's so weird and i'm thinking about this maybe i'm this is supposed to happen in the interview (laughs) i'm like freaked out right now (laughs) so i'm not a preacher like you and brenda but um, don't say me and Brenda. <laughs> I was reading in Second Kings and um, having a conversation with my god brother Terrence, and <sighs> this is so funny. I was talking about how often and they started coming to me yesterday morning, right? And I had no reason to be thinking about this. I knew the Holy Spirit was, you know, talking to mm-hmm. me. And so, the, my initial thought, my initial thought was, we have to stop placing. The respons- like God's responsibility on people, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it's not just that people don't have the capacity; people don't have the ability, ability. right? Brenda. So, I, mean, <laughs> I was saying, Brenda, the whole episode. Now I'm saying, <laughs> so, <clears throat> and that's so. To good. be honest with you, Meg, when it came to me, uh, man, when it came to me. I start thinking about how often we do that, and how often we're frustrated perplexed uh really distraught disappointed with life because because trinity is such a joyful person like you know when trinity's around me i feel happy so now trinity's responsible for my happiness happiness. yeah um because i feel peace when i get Mm. around and i'm with me right it's chill Mm. like i don't feel so much anxiety now Meg's responsible for my peace Mm. right and so we find ourselves in friendships um holding people to a certain standard that they shouldn't be held to and then blaming them when they can't fulfill something like, so what I'm saying is people can't fill your voids. Mm-mm. And I think this makes us such bad friends. I think a lot of us, and please hear my heart to my friends watching, cause I don't want to offend anybody. But when I say this, I think a lot of us are bad friends in the sense that we want people to be good in a way they aren't able to be good. Mm. Right. We're all human. Yep. And that means that we all have a limit. <laughs> Like God puts super on our natural. Yeah. But we're not super natural. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I love that. And so, you know, people can't feel your voice. People can't be your peace. People can't be your joy. People can't, you know, do that for you. And when I, I just thought about some of even the some of the friendship breakups that I've had where I feel like because I'm saved, um, because I'm kind of like strong in the sense where I think I think too, as friends, sometimes we forget that people are strong because his strength is made perfect where we are weak. I'm not really that strong. I'm really <laughs> like, sis, settle down. <laughs> I am really actually not that strong. Yeah. But can I can I tell you what I realized though? Yeah. I made it, I made being a good friend an idol. Mm. I made that's a thing. Friendship 
an idol. Oh, that's good. Because I was, I felt like I was good at it. Yeah. I'm good at, I'm, I, I am so good at anticipating uh-huh. the needs of others. Yeah. I believe, but I don't believe that I'm just good at it. I yeah. believe God gave me that. God yeah. gifted uh-huh. me with right. that. It's right. not because I'm just whatever. God gave that to me. And I think it's a part of who he called me to be yeah. and what he's called me to do. I can mm-hmm. anticipate the needs of others. Absolutely. I can see a need uh-huh. and Same. I don't, you don't even need to ask. Mm-hmm. I know, I know how to make a day. Yeah. I know how to make a moment. Mm-hmm. I know how to give you what you, I know how to be there for, and I made it an idol. Yeah, I get it. I and I was and I wrapped my identity mm-hmm. in being a bestie. Yeah. Because it was the only way I felt validated. It mm. was the only way I finally felt like this is I'm, I'm good at it. Yeah. I'm I'm you know, I'm mm-hmm. seen in this. Right, right, right. And it became an idol. Yeah. And and we know what God does with idols. Right, exactly. <laughs> he yeah. brings it down mm-hmm. because he wants to be the number one, the main thing, yeah. the main attraction, the main focus, mm-hmm. the main like and I did I surpassed God in all these ways because I made this uh you know yeah. position mm-hmm. an idol. Yeah. And I don't think people realize that we can do that. Absolutely. We can make friendships. It's so true. And I my in I was writing down these notes and when I finished the question the Holy Spirit gave me was well, the, the statement that he gave me was repent for giving people's God's responsibilities because God is a jealous God, mm. right? Like, I want to heal you. I want to make you whole. Mm-hmm. I want to bring things to totality. Mm-hmm. You know? Not marriage, not mm-hmm. kids. I love to tell women this since, since we're here. <laughs> and it's so funny because, you know, coming from me, it's like, girl, shut up. But I just want to say, <laughs> as much as I love Brandon, as much as I love becoming a first time mom, I don't think those are the things that make me Trinity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And I think so many times as women, yep. especially when we're living unhealed, uh, we expect those external factors, those different roles in society yep. to make, to give us identity. Yep. Well, only Christ can give you yep. identity. You know what I mean? They got mad at me for saying that. Cause I said, when you get married, you lose your last name. Mm-hmm. And when you have a child, you lose your first name. Mm-hmm. And women were mad. Like, <laughs> well, God, your first ministry is your family. I mean, women, some women yeah, were upset. And I'm like, God bless you. Yeah. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. that's the reality. I, I, we I, make those things our identity. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not. And it's not. And, it's not. and it, you know, I think I mentioned this in the, in the ebook. Which, one thing that women have in common, which is why we often find ourselves beefing. Um, is that we live unhealed, mm. right? And so because I'm living unhealed, I'm often blaming, projecting, hurting. Mm-hmm. And I think that all of these things will heal me. Mm. If I expose you, like we live in this, this, this is exposure. the era. Oh, the this exposure year. Exposure era. Like, you know, who who's you, who's next on Club Shay Shay? Exactly, exactly. Right? To expose. Exactly. Yeah. I hope that it's me so I can expose <laughs> the love of God. Because can we stop? Shannon, call me. Please um, call your friend Trini <laughs> so she can expose. I'm sick of it. Oh, can, we, can we change it up a little bit? But um, I think that, you know, just to, just as I'm, I'm going to tell you what I wrote yesterday morning because you, you really triggered that. We have this thing where we often place the responsibility of God on people. Mm-hmm. People can't. People can be godly. People cannot be God. Mm-hmm. Period. And my God brother, Terrence, told me that when I told him about what the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. was revealing to me, he's like, you should check out Second Kings. And so I went over there and I read about Naaman mm-hmm. and um, Naaman had leprosy. I think it's his Second Kings around the fourth or fifth chapter. And I'm not giving this story verbatim. So read your Bible for you. Read your Bible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Naaman had leprosy, right? And mm-hmm. so his wife had a, a servant, a handmaid that told him that the king of Israel could heal him. Mm. And so he goes to the king of Israel for healing. And the king of Israel gets so upset that he tears his clothes. And he said, who am I? I'm not God. I can't give you life or death. I can't, mm. I can't do that. And so <laughs> the story goes on where, he, where Elisha, uh, you know, asks the king, why are you so upset? You know, send him to me. Mm-hmm. You know, and Naaman ends up getting healed. He, you know, he tells him to dip in the Jordan, Jordan seven, seven times. times yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so well, what I found in that, I'm like, you know, a lot of people would say, that the king was wrong, but I'm like, I'm, he's not. <laughs> he I was wish fine. that more people would say, I'm not able to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm not able to be that. You know, because I think when I think about some of my my friendship failures, right? I think that I realized the people were 
leaning into me for something mm-hmm. or I've leaned into people for something. Mm-hmm. Right. And I wish they had told me and I wish I had said, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, same. Yeah. I, w- I especially in the time. Cause when you're a mother and like you said, you were the first to get married out of your friendship group. Mm-hmm. And that was the same for me in some yeah. of my relationships. And then when you become a mom mm-hmm. and you're kind of the first to do that, yeah. um, you're entering into a space. It's hard for your single friends to understand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that if yeah. there's not a lot of emotional maturity yes. of that other friend to right. understand that transition. Yeah. And when I was, and, and especially going through divorce, it's just not something that, I realized, like, I saw my mom divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, she, well, I didn't see her divorce my dad because they got divorced when I was, like, two. So I don't remember that. But, yeah. I, but she divorced my stepdad. So I went through that process at mm-hmm. 16. My mom and dad, or my mom and my stepdad were getting divorced at the same time as my dad and my stepmom. Wow. And I'm 16. So just think about being 16 years uh-huh. old. All those hormones. Mm-hmm. All those feelings. It's the hormones for me. That's number one. <laughs> for sure. I mean. Yeah, for real. Like, I think yeah. there's like a scientific fact that like 16-year-old females are clinically insane. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. At that age. Right. right. And so I'm having two parents, sets of parents that are going through a divorce at the same time. Yeah. And um, so I'm watching this. And because my mom was so strong and mm-hmm. like just a G like yeah. she went to like has two master's degrees work full time yeah. always provide like and just seeing her bounce back uh-huh. when it was time for me to get divorced uh-huh. I'm like I've seen this before I saw my mom did you feel like did you feel like you can do it absolutely because yeah. I saw my mom do it uh-huh. of course I can do it did yeah. I want to do it absolutely yeah. not right like right. I don't celebrate divorce whatsoever yeah. it's tragic and it uh-huh. grieves <laughs> the Lord. Mm-hmm. So I'm not ever celebrating that, but I definitely thought like my mom did it. I know I can, mm-hmm. I can do it too. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't prepared for what the emotional and like spiritual mm-hmm. heaviness that comes along with divorce. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't prepared. And I wish I would have done a better job. Like I said, it leaning into the intimacy of God, of God, yeah. then leaning into the intimacy of my friends, because then when like like you said, they have they have limits. Yeah, absolutely. They can't take on uh-huh. that heaviness yeah. in the way that only the Lord can. Because mm-hmm. he says, come to me, all those who are heavy and burning. Yeah. I will give you rest. Yes. It doesn't say your friends won't give you rest. Right, exactly. Your friends can help carry you absolutely. to the one who mm-hmm. can give you rest. Right. And that is the type of friend that I desire to be going absolutely. forward. And those are the type of friends that I desire to have going forward. Yeah. It's friends that are like, you down bad, sis. I can't help you, mm-hmm. but we're going to carry we, you on over exactly. to the one who can. Exactly. We're going to give you over to him and that's healthy friendship yes healthy friendship is not me taking it all on it's not me coming because because i think too because we forget that in a friendship that if you're not a good friend to yourself you can't be a good friend to anyone mm. else so if i'm if i'm dropping what needs to happen for me how am i going to make it happen for you this episode of in totality with megan ashley is sponsored by better help what's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day No, seriously, really think about it, guys. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. But the question is, uh, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you. I've spoken a few times on this podcast about how therapy has really helped me on my journey. And it can certainly help you if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash totality today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash totality. You know what I mean? It's impossible. Yeah. And so when I'm not able to cater to myself because I'm so focused, I've made this friendship I am so focused on catering to you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to like every time I'm going to find myself by myself. Yep. No matter how many people are around me. Yep. 
no matter how many people I know, yep, you're still gonna be in a room full of people feeling lonely. Yep. Because you you had not taken care of yourself. You got to deal with you. Yeah, you got to deal with you. You have to deal with you. Yeah. And and another thing that was in your book that that resonated with me is something uh-huh. that your mom had told raised you uh-huh. and was like, "Well, what did you do? Always Girl. holding you accountable." And okay. that was my mom. first of all. Let's block low because let's block. I'll block her. <laughs> let's all block my mama because she just does the most. Um, I she, resonated with that so much because that was my mom. My mom is the reason I'm so accountable, right? Uh, yeah, that's just my truth. And, you know, you, it's so funny because you think about how when I was a kid, when she would do things like that, I felt like she wasn't for me. Like, yes. Like, and she wasn't on my side. Like, you're my it's mom. It's like, you're my mom. Yeah, Have my back. Side. Exactly. What do you mean? What did I do? No, she's like, okay, but how did you contribute mm-hmm. to that? But, but, what, but, but what did mm-hmm. you do? And like I said in, in the book, it's not even that she was teaching me to, she was she was not teaching me to be mad at people, mm-hmm. but she was teaching me to take responsibility for how I engage in relationships, yep. right? Yep. Because we have a responsibility for how we engage in relationships. Yep. You don't just go into relationships just with people, connections with people, friendships with people, whatever you want to, you don't just go with the flow. Yeah. And that's something that I've learned to not, especially in my adult life. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Because I think if you just go with the flow, if you don't set a pace for how you want to friend. Yep. And I say friend as a verb. If you don't set a pace for how you want to friend, then friendship will just be any old kind of way. Mm. And yeah, it's that that doesn't give what it's supposed yeah. to give. And we all we all have the reason why I'm grateful for it now, because I relate to what you said. Like I used to feel like, dang, my mom ain't never got my back. Yeah. But now that I'm older, I appreciate yeah, it because so there are so many people that will take a relationship mm-hmm. and when the relationship goes bad, it was all the other person. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the and then this is what I hate when mm-hmm. people do. Well, I'm just, the role that I played is I'm just too forgiving. And oh, too, yeah, I just, I'm just too, <laughs> you know, I just have let people, uh-huh. th- your only role is victim. Yeah, absolutely. And That's you're not, not true. And you're not the victim. You're not a victim. Mm-hmm. You, and, this, and I said this when I, when I, when my divorce was, happening i was mm-hmm. like i participated in that marriage yeah absolutely. i was a participant mm-hmm. i'm not a victim of our of what happened yeah. i participated yeah i played a role in mm-hmm. something yeah there's always a little bit of accountability and even if you are a quote-unquote the victim mm-hmm. right in some sense you're not the victim in, in totality, totality. <laughs> you're not the victim you know what i mean yeah um and so i you know that's how i felt too about my best friend i made it all about her Mm-hmm. and what she did to me mm-hmm. right but i didn't consider how some of the things i did did could have made her feel this way yeah could have made her respond this yeah. way even though they weren't the right thing yeah i did not consider you can even say that for your marriage yep you can say he did this to me uh, you know I'm, I'm not coming for you friend if you're watching <laughs> but if you if you holler off and you call that man a b and he call you one back don't start crying <laughs> don't do that because what did you what role did you play exactly. in that type of response i can't we believe ha- you spoke to me like that okay but you literally just <laughs> emasculated this man you just, you know what i'm saying you open the door and everybody doesn't listen everybody doesn't have the strength to show up in a place that you are weak if you weak there i'm gonna be weak too you got some people like that you know what i'm saying okay like i'm trying <laughs> i don't want to go there but but you know, if you yeah. invite me, I might accept the invite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you RSVP. <laughs> yeah, I might just RSVP. <laughs> so I think too, a lot of times, oh, especially as believers, Meg, I think people will try us in a way because they feel like this, I don't know why I'm having all these thoughts. But listen, <laughs> I feel like people will try us in a way because they don't expect us to respond mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once we respond that way, once we say you, no, they question your yeah, they mm-hmm. question, they question your belief. Mm-hmm. But I think too, as as believers, we have to be. I'm, I'm not saying respond how people respond. I think we have to be secure in our decisions when we say, "Yeah, I'm not taking it," mm-hmm. and don't feel guilty about it. Because mm-hmm. I, I, me as a believer and a friend, a really good friend, I feel so guilty for saying I don't want this. Mm. You know what I mean? I think I went I went through a friendship breakup about two years ago. It was so hard for me. Mm. Um, it was really really hard for me because I just felt that sense of guilt. Mm. I felt like um, you were the one that detached. Or was it kind of like it was just I happening? The, the more the Lord revealed to me, it was just like, I don't want to be in this kind of friendship. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't want, I just don't want that, right? But it's also hard for me because 
I, I felt like I was a friend they needed in a sense that like faith, mm. like your friend, friend, your, your, uh, I was, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to do what the King of Israel couldn't do. Mm. You know what I mean? In some sense. And I feel like they were leaning on me like Naaman. Mm. <laughs> like they depended on me. Yeah. But at the same time, they, you know, it's a particular passage of scripture where Jesus goes to, I can't remember the city. But they want him to heal. They want him to deliver. They mm-hmm. want him. To, he's like, I can't. I can't do it here. Mm. And <laughs> and it's so funny. Every time I think about that passage, I can't remember exactly where it is right now. I think about how so often times we. It's not that we're incapable or we don't want to be that to people. Is that we don't have to be that to people who do not value what God is yeah. placing in our lives. Yeah, right? they always devalue. You know, yeah, in a sense. Um. And Jesus didn't exclude himself from healing, helping, yep. and saving anyone. But he just knew that he couldn't even operate in that space because of the beliefs that people had about him, right? And sometimes people can believe you for the positive thing and then hate you. They'll create this narrative. and not even a negative thing. They'll just create this narrative around you. And even though I don't like that about, even though I don't like that you the Savior, I still want you to heal me. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hate saying that you are like, I can't stand it. It's you, but I still want. But but since you got the ability, and like when Ooh, I say we, what is that? I don't get it. I don't get it. Because because <laughs> I don't know why, but I understand exactly what you're saying. Like uh-huh. I I know that. Yeah, yeah. You really don't even like me. Y- exactly. But you, you don't like, like but you me. like what I carry. Mm-hmm. You like what I can do for you. Absolutely. And not in the sense of do for you, like physically do for and you. Then you want to but- hold me bound to do it because you know my because you know my relationship with God and you know that I'm a believer. And so you want to make me bound to in some sense, like not bound to my belief, but bound to who I say I am. Mm-hmm. So if I don't do this, then you're not really this. But, yeah. But regardless of how you are negating who I yeah. am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think so many things that we can unpack, Meg. But- can I can I share one thing with you that, that yeah. really hurt me or not hurt me, but it does well, it does hurt me. It has hurt me in in previous relationships. Yeah. But I always felt like and maybe you can help me unpack like what this means okay. as a friend. But I've always felt like when it comes to the great things that I can do mm-hmm. in relationships, right? Yeah. Um. That was fine. Like, okay, you do great things, whatever. But the areas where I fell short, mm-hmm. my flaws, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm human. Right, right. And trash without God. Yeah. And the further I'm away from him, the more trash I am. I, smell you, I, I mean, get, I get smelly. I mean, <laughs> woo, I'm yeah. talking like. Teenage boy under arms, right, no right. deodorant. Yeah. It's bad, yeah, right? Yeah, uh-huh. The further I am from God. Mm-hmm. And I realized um, last year, um, as I developed more intimacy with him, I realized how far I was away from him Wow. Um, before. Mm-hmm. And, um, but anyway, I feel like sometimes in relationships, what I've experienced is it's like, the great qualities about myself and how I can show up and anticipate the needs and do all those things. Those were great. Mm-hmm. But then when those, when the trash part of me yeah. <laughs> came up, uh-huh. I was bound to that. That was who I was. Mm-hmm. But the good parts of me was just what I Do did. Do you mean that's, that's who you were to that person? To that person. Like, instead of, instead of saying, like, the bad things about you are who you are, the good things are just what you do. Uh-huh. Instead of this the good things are who, were. This is, like, instead of looking at you and saying, this is just who you are. Uh-huh. The good parts about you, that is who, who you, you are, are too. Yeah. And the bad parts about you, yes, that is obviously mm-hmm. I'm observing this behavior. So that That's is so true. who you are too. Yeah. But I think sometimes in relationships, when we're offended. Yeah, I've been convicted of it for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, that's just that we see the negative and that's who you are. And we forget. Yeah. That that's just a part of who they are. Yeah. Right? Like we're all flawed. We're all yeah. flawed. I definitely experienced that with my best friend. I think I made the mistakes that she made who she was. Yeah. Regardless of my experience with her. Yeah. We don't we don't really we don't really recall our experience with people once we're hurt. Yeah. We filter everything through the, that the hurt offense. Place. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the kicker of that is we end up releasing people from our lives that aren't necessarily time to release it's not even mm. it's not what god is calling us to do so that's what i wanted to ask you how do you know when in the right time 
how to identify a toxic relationship, a friendship, mm-hmm. and if it's a relationship that needs to end, yeah. or we just need to reevaluate how we show up in this relationship. Because, like okay. you said, some, sometimes it's not like you have to end it. We just gonna do our relationship different now. Yeah, right. I think conversations. We need to have more conversations. We need to talk. I think not subliminal on not yes, tweeting out as stuff. Women, yeah. I think we do a great job at assuming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like for real mm-hmm. um, I think even if I was to just use my best friend as an um, as an example maybe she could have assumed Trinity's not gonna like show up for me like she used to because she's married now mm-hmm. you know, so, so you know instead of like having a conversation like what does our friendship look like now mm-hmm. it, it comes with emotional maturity like you said um, like we're navigating to different spaces right where I'm I'm no longer uh, a pre-k through fifth grade music teacher where I'm I'm home all the time and I'm off on weekends and I'm off on spring break. Actually, now I do this and this is how my life is navigating and I travel a lot. I do mm-hmm. this. Um, so our friendship looks different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think that means that... I think what we do is we take our different seasons and we make it... We take things personal that aren't yeah. personal. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not personal. It's not. Yeah. It's really not personal. Yeah. Um, And I think we do that because we don't want to have conversations we're afraid we're intimidated yeah um, we're afraid to be rejected in some sense yeah but a lot of us have questions if we just be honest especially as women we have we have questions for our friends but we don't we're afraid to talk yeah and you, you what is talk. that you yeah. have to you, talk you gotta, you gotta i talk. said that i think i, said I can this tell you like, what it is we've always been encouraged not to talk from school until into adulthood think yeah about it. Shh. be quiet Shh. Yeah. be quiet i have mm-hmm. a whole uh, no i was a teacher <laughs> so i hated that I hated mm. that because I, I, I felt like it played into children who knew, who needed to say something but were afraid to talk. Wow. I haven't finished writing this theory. I always tell Brandon, I'll be finished with it by the time I'm 40. <laughs> but um, I'm 33 now, so I got seven years. I'm working on this. <laughs> but I think that it really plays a big part of that. Of, even I'm a bit now, people don't say this anymore, but I know I'll be the mom to say stay in a child's place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think in context, sometimes child when i heard that kind of that thing like stay in a child's place mm-hmm. it meant i can't speak to this mm. i can't say what i feel mm-hmm. i can't you know i i'm afraid that i will if it, this offends somebody mm-hmm. so i'm not gonna say it like mm-hmm. i think it may you know and that plays into our adulthood yeah and it's something that we have to work to undo yeah we have to, like we really do because yeah. i'm telling you it really plays into um our mental and how we perceive conversation it really does. Yeah. Somebody's always telling us, has always told, especially millennials, be quiet. Quiet. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I and I think the reason why so many relationships are, and we're seeing it like crazy, uh-huh. like not just like we're seeing marriages fall apart. We're seeing friendships fall apart. Absolutely. It's like I'm in my DMs all the time. Like I had friend, my friend 20 years and we're not friends anymore. Yeah. And it's been the hardest, break. like all these things and friendship and relationships end because when people just stop talking, yeah, absolutely. like we have to continue the conversation. Mm-hmm. It's like we fall in love with each other yeah, romantically and platonically. Uh-huh. And then we just stop talking. Yeah, absolutely. We stopped saying and we've been doing life together, like like literally doing life together, and, and we're not over. talking. Yeah, and it's like, traumatic. It is. It's traumatic. It is, and I want to do better. Like I, I, you know, I'm so thankful that I have Jay and Jordan that are like the closest people to me right now. Yeah, um, and I'm able to really put into practice all the ways that I just was not a good friend. Mm-hmm. Um before yeah. and I can put it into practice in real time and one of my biggest things is is feeling something and saying something mm-hmm. I was our only child yeah. so I'm used to feeling things mm-hmm. and just being quiet yeah and just internalizing it right and my mom do you know sometimes that we make those people who internalize things bad friends they're not necessarily bad friends so they just don't know how to communicate I <laughs> Okay, so because I'm because I so when I was listening to your book, I uh-huh. thought I I identify with the ghoster, uh-huh. and a small part of the one what was the one that was well, yeah the ghoster that doesn't want to take it uh not you avoiding accountability yeah 
and and <laughs> the remember the line. No, I did. That was the first thing. I was like, girl, not you avoiding accountability. I was like, oh. Um, and I for me, it wasn't so much avoiding the accountability because I can take accountability for mm-hmm. something, but I can't deal with rejection. Uh-huh. I cannot deal with that. Yeah. I can't deal with telling you how I feel and it getting dismissed. Uh-huh. That's when I'll ghost you. Okay. That's when I'll be like. I'm going to make you, because my words obviously aren't enough. I think subconsciously that's how I used to think. Like, my mm-hmm. words aren't enough, so I'm going to show you in my actions mm-hmm. how I feel. Yeah. That and I hate it being fake. Mm-hmm. I could not fathom the idea of smiling in your face knowing that I'm having an issue yeah. with you, but I haven't been able to gather my words to articulate to you what yeah. my offense is. Yeah. So, but I can't be fake. <laughs> at the same time. So, but that's not maturity. I think that's it, not, that was me being immature. So I think you, you get... I I give you grace to ghost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I give you grace to ghost. Um, because sometimes I think a lot of times the ghost are gets the bad rap for not showing up for going away. Right. But I think a lot of times we don't, we don't take accountability as it pertains to the person trying and then our response to them trying and that being a, a blow. Yes, yeah. it is devastating. <laughs> I don't think people yeah. under it's it feels like rejection. Yeah, absolutely. Like it feels like the ultimate rejection. Yeah. To cuz one I I think because I am a person that can anticipate the needs for mm-hmm. other people means that I have gotten into a practice of ignoring my own. Mm-hmm. And so then when I get to a place of being vulnerable and saying, "Hey, this actually hurt me." Yeah. And then you're like, "Girl, it is not that deep." Okay, I'll yeah. do it. Yeah, no. It's like it's absolutely as deep for me. I think too. I, okay, so you you asked me when do we know if we should transition in our relationships to like a different season for our yeah, friendship or, or, or if or it should end. end. This yeah, I think I, for me, what I've done is personally, I was telling Brandon um, that sometimes in relationships, right, we we often we think of friendship in the sense that it can only be this way Mm -hmm. it has to be one way Mm -hmm. or no way Mm -hmm. right the friendship only works like this like in this space but you know man hang on i ain't even gonna hold you i made a lot of transitional things uh a lot of transitional um who can i say (laughs) how do i say this let me see there's tissue if you need tissue oh thank you i appreciate that oh wait yep holy ghost so (laughs) i made i'm I've made some big decisions as it pertains to friendship, mm. especially like in the last year or two of my life. Mm. Um, and that's probably why my content has contented the way it has. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've just been very transparent there uh, because I feel like, you know, to be very honest with you, I've been evolving a lot. Like I, my life has changed so fast, quickly. Yeah. And I look at people and how they respond to the space that I'm in, and I mm. decide then yeah, I don't even gotta have a conversation with them. It's not me ghosting them. I just know if it's worth it or not, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm like, okay, so I don't, I don't think this will go the go here. Mm-hmm. And so I'm doing better at, I'm doing better at accepting things for what they are instead of trying to create a new narrative yeah. for friendship. Yeah. Oh, that's not really how she feels. Yeah. Well, that's really not how she is or whatever. Um. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing much better at that. So this this is what I'm trying to say. I have friends, I've had friends who would be upset that when I walked in the room, somebody wanna take a picture with me. Mm. And I can't change who I am. I can't show up as a different person. I can't I can't <laughs> I can't turn off my personality or to turn my face off. Or turn my face off. Um I I'll turn my body off. I'm a fit girl. Girls come up to me and be like, "Yo, you were fine." You know what I mean? Because uh, no, because because she is. I can't uh, thanks, but I really can. You know, I for a, a while I wanted to, in some sense, like accommodate those things. Mm. I can't live accommodating those kind of things. Yeah. And so while it may have surprised me, I am so for the people in my life right now who do not, quite frankly, give a flying flip about Trinity. And like they care about me, but they don't care about me. Not in that way. Not yeah. in that way. Like they're not pressed at all. You know yes. What I mean? Like so serious. Yes. I, told you, I was out eating with a friend and it kind of, because I had started feeling this sense of guilt when people would like be like, yo, I, mm-hmm. I, yo, I want to take a picture with you or something mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> I started feeling this sense of guilt. I was out with a friend 
And the wild person was asking me to literally they had they they went to their car and they got a book. They wanted me to sign their book. My first book, now not next. The girl wanted to take a picture of me. She started telling me about how she went on her weight loss journey because of me, all the things. And this is a middle of me and my friends in her action. My friend is sitting there the whole time just eating, like, mm-hmm, go on. You need help. <laughs> right. I'll take the vision. Yeah. And you know, I said, I think I think my eyes are so fixed on the people who are not accepting me in this season that I have not put my eyes on the people who don't care. Yeah. Like they're so for it. It doesn't yeah. bother them. It doesn't, you know, yeah. like I've learned to like, I've just learned to accept the responses for what they are. Yeah. I think I've been guilty of trying to create a new narrative uh, or using their childhood as an excuse yeah. for their behavior. Yeah. Like, not to say that it doesn't impact it, but this is something that comes with me understanding that Meg is not the reason that I feel this way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so projecting it and making it about you and so mm-hmm. forth, you know, I'm just kind of like growing into this space where I'm I'm really paying attention to how people respond to me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's taking inventory mm-hmm. is my big thing. Like yeah. take inventory. Yeah. How, like that is important mm-hmm. in deciding where to place Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And that's something that my mom was teaching me a lot lately. Like she was like, Megan, you all, you just have to know where to place people. Yeah, you do. Everyone doesn't have to be in the same, mm-hmm. hold the same space for Absolutely. you. You got to know where people go. You have to know where to place yeah. them. You have mm-hmm. to know how to place people in your life. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I think the way that you went about this book and how it's y'all the audio i'm telling you <laughs> it's the audio for me um it it doesn't you have such a gentleness mm-hmm. in delivering this that it renders your attention to focus on you your know what's own funny heart about that gentleness it started from a place of rest <laughs> The big girl started from the big girl me was started from a place of rest. I was mm-hmm. upset. I was really frustrated mm-hmm. uh, with me girls, right? And just experiencing things that I didn't think go in adulthood. Yeah, or things that I didn't think go with other women who are believers. Yeah, right. That's now that right. Like can you? Because I know. Because you said <laughs> this book is for you. Didn't want because at the end the Holy Ghost was like, yeah. go on and add this in there. Uh-huh. You didn't want it. You were like, I didn't want to go here, but because you wrote the book to be for anybody, whether yeah. they were a believer or not. Right. But I do believe mm-hmm. if you could do a Mean Girl Church, a Mean Church uh, Girl uh, 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 manual, uh-huh. because there it because that's a whole yeah. nother thing. Yes, the Bible gives us instructions mm-hmm. on how we should handle discord Absolutely. and and conflict yeah. and we cannot say that we're women of God and we're cutting people off Absolutely. we're not taking the proper measures of yeah. going to this person with the yes. offense and if they're not listening then going getting no, another friend the offense is not even a real offense the offense the offense with a lot of women it's just, just intangible <laughs> it's an intangible offense mm. and when I say that I mean like you you offend me because you're Megan. And you wow. walk in that strength. You walk in that power. You wow. know who you are. And that offends me. Wow. <laughs> but who's mature enough to admit that? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So what we do is as women often, unhealed women, I would say that. That's because that's what a mean girl is. An unhealed, unhealed woman. Mm-hmm. An unhealed adult woman. Mm-hmm. And what we do is we start to make things about Megan. We act like Megan is the issue. We'll even create something. And when I say that, I mean like, it's like for instance, a little miss, I just don't like her. She don't know why she don't like you. She actually does like you, <laughs> but she doesn't like mm-hmm. you. And so she'll create this thing. And like, don't say it's discernment. Cause some, sometimes not, it don't be, dis- it's not that. That, that anointing right out of they have, it's not, it's not. <laughs> It's not that that, that discernment. It's it's not. You're upset that I'm beautiful and you don't feel beautiful. I'm confident Ooh, within myself. Wow. You're upset that I'm pursuing what God has given me to pursue, and you are scared to pursue it. And so, seeing me is is a constant reminder to you of what you feel like you lack. So Jesus. in the mean girl manual, I, I see I, I say that we're upset with with what other people possess mm-hmm. because we don't think we had a potential for it. Mm. And so what I what I need to do now, if I'm a woman who struggles with seeing other women step into their power, mm-hmm. I need to understand that that's not just for her, but that's for me. Yeah. And that when I see her, that's a reflection of, of me, me. Yes. and not showing me what I can't do or what I can't have. You know what I mean? So good. So I think 
just because of the 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 nature of womanhood, we've yeah. been taught to go against one another. It's society. We've been taught to compete with one another. But what is our weight? The length of our hair, especially black girls. The texture mm-hmm. of our hair. I'm serious. Yeah, like, this is not good hair. <laughs> to a lot of people, this is not good hair, right? And so I find myself jealous of a girl who has. Uh, a, a a different kind of texture, texture. softer uh-huh. texture hair, or mm-hmm. you know whatever. Seriously, like it can be so petty, petty, so minute, so stupid, so little. But it's in our, it's literally innate in so many women to look at the next woman and say something about her I just don't like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a constant undoing. It's Ooh. a constant undoing to you know because you know it's so funny that. Do you know that the enemy teaches us to eliminate who God calls us to, to who God places in our lives to elevate our lives? I don't want to be Meg Frank with her podcast bigger than mine. I'm serious. I'm so serious. I don't want to be Meg's friend because she's connected to a room of people that I'm not yet connected to, so it makes me feel little. I feel inferior. You know what I'm saying? Even though Meg is welcoming, she's beautiful, she's kind, she's caring, she's 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 willing to teach me anything she knows, but I have this belief that if I connect to that kind of woman, that I won't I won't shine, I won't matter, and that just breaks my heart that people feel that, and Absolutely. I get it, mm-hmm. I get how easy it is, because yeah. once you leave a door op- a crack open, the enemy come Absolutely. in, the can do, Absolutely. I mean, so I get how it can happen, yeah, but it just it grieves me, it is because man, what we what we could do together, what we could do together, right? Absolutely. Without the, I don't even have a thought in mind when it comes to the next woman, what she could do better than me. I think for me, if there's anything that I feel like I don't possess that you possess, it excites me. Yeah. Right? And it should. Yeah, it excites me. It and should. I'm grateful for that because I know so many people struggle with that. We're like, we even live in a society where women will try to convince themselves they're confident and you can literally see them trying to convince themselves that they're, they're not intimidated, they're like whatever, but they're still mean. <laughs> they're confident, but they mean you ain't you not mean and confident. <laughs> Period. But they'll try to come. I'm a very confident person, but you're mean to other women. Ooh, man. You're not confident. You're not. Man. You're not. And so I think too, in the mean girl man, well, what I want people to see is not just other people. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Like, yeah, she probably do stink. Like she yeah. probably do got a bad attitude. She probably did do something really foul. Yeah. She probably did. But a lot of times, I it's just us. It's us. It's us. And I, you know, I, I never went into the mean girl manual thinking that I was gonna write about Kalisha. Really? No. Discovering I was a mean girl, the portion of that book was the Holy Spirit. Like, oh, you thought you was gonna come write about so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so, because these are the instances that you, yeah, read me to filth, baby. Read me to filth. It was sitting in my hotel room, ex brand crying. Crying. Oh my gosh. Cause I'm thinking that was the reason why you wrote oh, it. No, no. I just thought about no, the reality of it was, Meg, to be honest with you. Wow. The Holy Spirit gave me an assignment. Since you so mad about me, girls, let's, let's teach people how to better treat one another. Mm. Right? And then I got into it and it was like, oh. I'm gonna show you you. I'm gonna show you you. And yeah. Isn't that so crazy how that's because that's what God did for me last year like mm-hmm. i'm like oh i'm out of this marriage like yeah. you know i'm free i'm out the da-da. and god was like yeah we still gonna deal with you yeah. i might have released you out of that but you still got it you, there's this work that you yeah. still got like we still gonna deal with you i, I really admire you so much oh, i don't know you. that you have gone through how, how long has it been since you've been divorced it'll be a year next month okay so you've mm-hmm. gone through a divorce in this last year you've gone through a national breakup. Not, not a breakup. national. Yeah. Like for real. <laughs> not a national. How breakup. are you still standing? How, like, what has that been? Like, because you know, it's one thing to like go through a divorce mm. with your best friend and your husband, mm. right? And then it's another to go through a divorce with your best friend. Mm hmm. Right? Yeah. Would you, would you? At the same time. At the almost same time. At, at the, the same, same time. Kind of just going through it. Yeah. At the same time. Um, I literally the most cheesy response is the truth, the Lord. Yeah. Like I, I don't like 
I don't know. I, I would not have made it uh-huh. had I not leaned into the intimacy with him. Yeah. But I but I also realized that it was my wilderness season. Like mm. he wanted, he said, I am I like I see it now so much as a mercy. Like, Megan, I just love you so much. Yeah. And I was willing to do whatever it took uh-huh. to get you to this place of intimacy wow. so that you knew who you were and who I called you to mm-hmm. be. And so that you didn't have to be walk around offended so that you could know that you're loved and that you can, ex- you know, show my love in- to Were other people. Were you ever pe- mad at God in the process? Oh, angry. Yeah. Hurt. Mm-hmm. Because why did you do all that to bring me here? Like- I thought this was going to be my season. This is my year. Like, this was going to be my time to, yeah. like, be free and, like, live my best life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was angry. I was hurt. I was confused. I, st- like, still don't really know why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I trust him. Yeah. Because when I didn't have any way of figuring out how I was going to get out of the bed, mm-hmm. <laughs> he was there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the more I leaned into you him, like the you more... Were like- I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're fine. When you say when you say I didn't, you didn't know how you were going to get out of bed, that got me because I think sometimes we only think that's possible with our husbands and our men. But girl, you hurt my feelings. And girl, what? Truth, girl. It, no, that was worse than the divorce. <laughs> I'm telling you, that was I, way. I, I believe I have, you. I have never. I believe you. I, I and maybe because I, you know our marriage was falling apart for a long time, and I was somewhat prepared. Yeah, that I wasn't prepared for. So maybe that to you know made it worse but uh-huh. it i mean it cut way deeper yeah it felt like uh-huh. i mean and and because there's so many there's so much was invested and uh-huh. you know i moved my whole life down here uh-huh. my kids my husband like you know yeah. it was part of why my marriage fell apart it was uh-huh. what you know all the things yeah. and so it felt worse and it probably felt like too like in some sense going through a divorce navigating divorce and going through this with your best friend, it's almost like the person that you would expect to be here for you is now also leaving you. Oh yeah. yeah. And hates you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that yeah. it's like it 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 was the worst. It still doesn't feel good. The grieving process. Yeah. yeah. And I think I'll be grieving this, you know, for some time. Mm-hmm. But I I but I do know that it would be impossible without the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like it would it would be impossible. Without him. How has the forgiveness process been for you in grieving? Because I feel like sometimes you can grieve and like you can get upset. Yep. Like you can get triggered. Yep. Easily. In the grieving process. But then you can be forgiving. But in the forgiveness portion of it, you're like, I was so dumb. I should have paid attention to that. <laughs> right? I was so stupid. I Do you think feel like that. I think reading your book or listening to the audio. Yeah. I was more aware of things that I I was like, oh. That's what that was. Yeah. Oh, like, and and kind of feeling kind of dumb. But like, well, how did you not see that? Make like, how do you not see that? Uh-huh, how didn't uh-huh. you see that? And you know, but God's grace and mercy. Yeah, like yeah. it all happened. Like I have to always appeal to the thought of nothing is. God's not caught off guard by anything. Yeah, He's not. He's, you know what I'm saying? And so he's sovereign and he's good. Mm -hmm. And the pain is the pain. Mm -hmm. But I think, honestly, I read the beta Satan right as everything was happening in Mm -hmm. May of last year. um, And that helped Mm -hmm. with the forgiving. Yeah. Because who am I not to forgive? Yeah, right, right. Like, right. who am I not even to if forgive? I don't understand. Even if I don't get it, yeah. even if you're hurting me, uh-huh. even if you're lying on me, even if you are just being mean to me. Yeah. Like, who am I not to forgive when our Savior yes. pushed up and has his spine exposed, rubbing yes. up against this splinter beam to right. say, Forgive them, yeah. for they know not what they do. Mm-hmm. Who am I right. not to forgive? Mm-hmm. And I also know that a lot of things aren't because of me. I can take accountability for mm-hmm. my role all yes. day. I wasn't a good friend in some areas. Uh-huh. I bled out on my friends. Uh-huh. I was I was mean in, at times where I was hurt. Do you and, feel like you really bled out on your friends? Do you, because I, 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 I asked this because... I think this, it was perceived that way. In this culture... Nobody 
everybody wants to claim that they're like low maintenance friends, but none of us are low maintenance. Yeah. Let's be honest. Like, yeah. We want to feel seen. Yeah. We want to feel validated. Yeah. We want people to show us that we're heard, that yeah. we're cared for. Like we need that, right? Yeah. I do think there's, in some sense, we can't bleed on people in the sense that we place God's responsibility on them. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, I think in that sense, but I think also sometimes we take on the, and I'm just, you know, we take on this role of, because they rejected us, we mm, bled. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I have a hard time with like, if there if there's any area of accountability on me, I'll probably take most of the blame for it. Okay. Like, I'll just take all the blame. Okay. If I know, because if I know in any, and like I said, everybody has a responsibility, Absolutely. right? So. I know I played a role. Yeah. Just like in my marriage, mm-hmm. I know I played a role. Yeah. And so then I feel like I then can accept the abuse of, of certain behavior uh-huh. because, well, I mean, I did. Partic- so instead of being like, I don't know, I guess it's hard for me to know, did I bleed out or was I just hurt? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I was just a friend that was hurt and going through a divorce. I don't know. I was just about to say that because. I don't know. Because like, that's what I feel. I feel like, and I'm not, I'm not pacifying you mm-hmm. but I feel like there are people I know I've been one to expect things of people that they cannot absolutely us, right guilty but I also think that I've been made to feel guilty about a uh, being in a place of a, a desert place yeah uh, you know where I really needed my community of people and because you know have because sometimes you know especially in female friendships but they be feeling the way before we get exposed to it. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- you've been, you never <laughs> liked me. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. You never liked me. Yeah. My friend is not just my friend. That's a calling. That's a yes. purpose. They and I can't be- treat and they that. they don't become common because we broke up. Now, I know they sound crazy. Okay. But they don't become common because we broke up. I don't get to dishonor you. I don't, I don't get to crazy. dishonor you. Oh, I don't get to act like God man. didn't place you in my life, that God didn't assign you to my life, that you didn't show up in some way, in some capacity that changed my, my life. life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to act like you come because we broke up. Mm-mm. My feelings hurt. I miss you. And God is dealing with me over, over here. Over here. Yeah. But I refuse to make the grieving process worse by acting like you not who you were. Yeah. Because I'm mad. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. We could talk about this all day. I know <laughs> the team is like, I ain't even putting up a flash no more. Forget it. I know they sick frankly. of us. I'm sorry, I y'all. appreciate but you. But this was so good, yeah, and I thank you because it brought so much. Again, like healing and just peace. Mm-hmm. I can't really explain it. It was just peace. Like I listened to it, and I was like, okay, Lord. I you yep those were the areas where I needed to be better there are the areas where I wasn't a good friend Mm -hmm. there's the areas where I just wasn't a good woman yeah you know what I mean forget the friend part I just wasn't good person you know that I hadn't dealt with right because sometimes like when we don't deal with things we make other people deal with yeah Yeah. and the book just brought so listen when when the audio comes out y'all are gonna be blessed but the book is available now yes so go get it please tell them where they can find it my ebook, The Mean Girl Manual, She Don't Like You and That's Okay, is available on my website at yourfriendtrend.com. Um, I think that this book is a, it's a book for women who aspire to heal, find individuality, and have a desire to uplift other women. Whether you struggle with female friendships that are just like people or even family members, maybe it's your mom, maybe your aunt, and you really just don't know how to deal with them, there's a character for somebody Yes. That will help you learn to love better. Not for you to go and be like, you know, oh yeah, this is, this is her. No, but but an opportunity for you to, to get to know them better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I pray that this book blesses you. I pray that it changes your perspective. And I pray that when you finish this book, that you feel like you have a responsibility to show up as a healed version of Mm, yourself. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you for writing that book and saying yes to God, because I know that was hard. Yes. To write and, and your vulnerability and um, transparency was refreshing, mm-hmm. needed, and convicting mm-hmm. in a good way, in the yeah. most in the most positive way. You know what hurt me the most about that book? What? I think about Kalisha and I had to go back and write it. I always said, I'm, I'm done. I'm, mm. I'm not going to take some back. I'm done. So that's why, I, that's why mm. it, I'm done. Like, you know, I'm yeah. like, I'll take that. Okay. I'm, so, I'm not going to say that no more. Because I remember feeling like I'm done. Yeah. I'm, when I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
And God showed me that he would be the one to tell me. Tell me when I'm done. done. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to do better because yeah. I definitely, I told you, you gathered me the other day and gathered me again. That's <laughs> I'm fine. sorry. Korea. But thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you guys for listening. And um, send this to a friend. Send it to a friend maybe that yes. you're having a conflict with. Send it to a friend that you haven't talked to in a while. Um, send it to your friends that you are good with to keep your friendships healthy. Um, and go get Trinity's book and send it to everybody you know. Send it to your auntie, your uncles, everybody. <laughs> men need it too. Yeah. Send it to mm-hmm. I don't care. Send it to the men. They need it too. The send it to every Yeah. <laughs> there's some mean girls and some men. I've seen some mean girl behavior in men. I have. I have. Okay. Um, So make sure you guys go check it out. Trinity, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next week.